Good afternoon all. Today I want to investigate how slow is Arduino. So I've got an Arduino Nano here. Uh, it's the most convenient one. It fits into a breadboard and it hooks directly up to uh, my PC's USB. And I've very simply attached an oscilloscope to uh, digital output D13 and ground. And here's the trace on my scope. And I want to look at how quickly or slowly this Arduino does things. Now by does things, uh, what I really mean is takes the D13 output high and then takes it low again because that's the only thing that I can actually watch on the oscilloscope. Now we kind of know how fast the chip is because it's got a 16 megahertz crystal attached. In fact this is probably a ceramic resonator. I don't think you can get crystals this small. But we know that um, the clock speed of the microcontroller is 16 megahertz and most instructions are one clock cycle so it should be able to do 16 things every microsecond. So I have a really simple Arduino sketch uh, where in the loop I'm just doing two things. I'm setting uh, digital pin D13 high and then I'm setting it low using these digital write commands. So there are only two instructions in the loop. Now there is a third instruction in the setup and that is that I need to tell it that pin D13 is an output because the default course is input. So let's compile that and see what we get on the oscilloscope. Now I've got my scope set to one microsecond per division. So within one of these divisions here, the CPU is executing 16 instructions and my on and off times are really long. So I'm gonna slow the scope down. This is two microseconds per division. And in fact, you can see that the total period, that is the total time between the falling edge and then the next falling edge or the rising edge, I'm looking at the rising edge on my trigger, the total time is 10.6 microseconds. So that's 10.6 times 16 processor instructions. That's 170 clock cycles. So why is it taking 170 CPU clock cycles to do what should be possible in two instructions? And so I've been doing a little bit of uh, reading around and it seems that for the convenience of being able to call that pin on the CPU D13, there is a large overhead in terms of execution time that the Arduino makes us suffer. The AT Mega 328P doesn't actually have a pin called D13. You can see here that what Arduino calls digital pin 13 is actually port B bit 5 on the AT Mega 328P. And it seems that the conversion of this number 13 to port B bit 5 doesn't occur at compile time, so it's not just converted once, it actually occurs at runtime. So the conversion takes place every single time round the loop. In fact, it's done twice because it's done once for the high instruction and once for the low. That's a massive amount of additional work that should only really need to be done once. And there's something else that's noticeable on this scope trace. You can see that the on time is about two and a half divisions. The off time is a little bit more. It's actually about two and three quarter divisions. Um, I've set the uh, trigger now to falling edge so that my uh, on time is first and my off time is second. Now you can see this uh, here because I've got uh, some measurements here for the positive width. That's the on time and the negative width. The positive is 5.064 microseconds. The negative is 5.49. And the explanation for that is that although there appear to be only two instructions here in the loop, the CPU has to somehow get from this this point here, this second instruction, back to the first one. So the loop function within Arduino actually adds something else. It's a jump or a branch or a go-to or something of that description to get from the second instruction back to the first one. And so by my, my calculation, that jump or branch or go-to is taking about seven clock cycles. Now I think the branch instruction in AT328, AT Mega 328P is 
two clock cycles, so there's a little bit of additional code in there, there's a bit of extra overhead. Now, while we're here looking at this scope trace, there's something else I wanted to point out. This looks like a very stable, well, almost a square wave, but actually it's not completely stable. If I slow the uh, scope down, you can see that every now and again, there's a bit of a jitter. The pulses just seem to sort of disappear momentarily. If I slow it down more, you can see that more often. And in fact, the more I slow it down, the more this jumping and this jittering becomes apparent. Until here, it's fairly apparent that there's quite a lot of noise of some sort in there. And there is an explanation for this. The Arduino isn't just executing my digital write high and digital write low instructions and then adding in the jump that goes back to the beginning. It's doing something else. It's executing interrupts. Now, the interrupts are coming from timer zero, which is producing an interrupt about every millisecond in order to update the millis uh, register, the millis variable. So about a thousand times a second, there's a tiny little disturbance in my square wave. And the closer I get my time base to one millisecond per division, the closer I get to having my scope synchronized with that interrupt. It will never sync actually, because it's syncing to the output pin being changed. But uh, you can see these disturbances in the scope trace, which are caused by this interrupt function. Now, what if I want to get the Arduino to work faster than this, this 10.6 microsecond period, which actually corresponds to a frequency of 94 kilohertz, which isn't really very fast, considering that the microcontroller has a 16 megahertz crystal. Well, we can do it, but we're going to have to lose these nice, friendly digital write functions with our nice Arduino number 13, which we know as the LED pin and replace them with these rather intimidating looking manipulations of port B. And you can see here that I'm working in binary and it's bit five that I initially set to a one and then I change to a zero in this instruction below. Now, just a bit on the pin mapping here. We know that digital pin D13 is the highest numbered pin on an Arduino, but it would make more sense if it went up to digital pin 15 because then we'd go from digital naught to 15, that would be 16 port bits to 8-bit ports. And there are uh, bits PB6 and PB7, which would, if they could be used, be digital pins 14 and 15. But you can see that they have an alternative function, and that is that they can be used for the crystal. And of course, in Arduino, the crystal is used. So those two pins can't be used as I.O. ports. And that's why in Arduino, it only goes up to 13. And that's why we're looking at port B bit five. So let's compile this sketch with uh, port B bit five being set high and then low and then us looping around. You can see I've commented out the digital write, so they're no longer being compiled. So they don't exist effectively. Let's uh, compile that and see what we get on the scope. And what we get is this, which is a bit peculiar. We've got this very short on time, but a much longer off time. Now that's explained by the fact that the Arduino code is having to work out some method of looping back to the beginning. The on time is so short actually that my scope is having trouble seeing it as a square wave at all. We're starting to get um, what look like either capacitive or inductive effects because of the way uh, the uh, scope is connected through to the microcontroller. We've got all these uh, PCB traces and pins going down into breadboard and breadboard uh, connections all quite close to each other. So that's where that's all coming from. I did think it might have been something to do with the D13 LED, but I've just moved it to D12 and it doesn't seem to be that much different. Now things are running a lot faster now. You can see the total period time from, uh, what would it be, rising edge to rising edge or falling edge to falling edge is actually less than a microsecond. It's 942 nanoseconds. We've got a, a frequency of 1.06 megahertz, so it's much faster, but it's very asymmetrical. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to patch this up so that I can uh, A, get rid of this nasty curved spike here, and B, 
kind of match the on time to the off time a bit. So what I want to do is put a little delay in here after setting the uh, bit high before I then set it low. Now I don't really want to use uh, Arduino's delay microseconds so what I'm just going to do is just put a load more of these set the bit high uh, instructions and then set it low. Now of course if you set the bit high and then set it high again nothing happens it just stays high so these in effect just act as wasted time so lots of setting it high just the one setting it low because we've got the additional overhead of the time it takes to loop back round. And when that's compiled it looks like this we've now got a much more respectable on time it's still shorter than the off time so I could stick a load more of those instructions in I'll just change the scopes time base um, but now we've got a frequency of 723 kilohertz well that's a lot better a lot faster than the 96 kilohertz we were getting when we were using the digital write instructions so direct port manipulation has speeded the microcontroller up. Now you've got to be a bit careful with these direct port manipulation uh, statements written like this because not only here am I putting a 1 in D13, which is port B bit 5, I'm also writing a 0 to D12 and a 0 to D11, 10, 9, 8. I'm writing data to a whole bunch of Arduino output pins they're not set to outputs, of course, because I've only set uh, 13 to output. But I'm manipulating an entire 8-bit port here, not just individual digital pins. Now, what about this jitter caused by the Arduino doing its uh, interrupts for the milliseconds count? Well, if I slow the time base of the scope, it's still there. And of course, everything's running a lot faster now. But you can quite clearly see that there's a lot of interruptions from something and I thought it might be quite fun, I haven't prepped this, so I'm not sure if it's going to work, to try and remove this in the crudest way possible by just switching off interrupts altogether on the AT Mega 328P microcontroller. Now I've been through the AT Mega 328P datasheet and I can't find a global interrupt enable, which I was hoping to find, but I have found the interrupt mask register for timer zero, it's called TIMSK0, and you can switch off all these interrupt sources. It's the uh, compare match interrupt enable, match B that is, match A, and then the overflow. It's probably this one that they're using, but if I simply write a zero to that entire register, I should be able to shut off interrupts altogether. So here's the uh, statement here, TIMSK0 just equals naught. Now Arduino sets all the interrupts up to make this millis function work and in my setup I'm just switching it all back off again so the interrupts shouldn't be functioning and I shouldn't get that uh, interruption. I've commented out just for the moment because I want to do a before and after. So here's uh, the before, in other words without me putting this instruction in. So this time base shows it best. What we're looking at here is these sort of disappearances of, of large groups of these uh, waveforms, you can just see them sort of vanish momentarily and over here they just disappear momentarily and now I'll do it with the uh, enable, the uh, interrupt enable removed and now we're getting completely jitter free square wave. We are getting these quantization uh, noise pulses here but that's just the scope quantizing a line which isn't completely straight none of that disappearing, jumping, jittering pulses that we were getting before. And so actually what the microcontroller is doing, I'm back to digital writes now so that this is slow again, the microcontroller is now producing a completely clean square wave with none of those interrupt interruptions. So that was a little look at uh, how slow the Arduino is at switching a port on and off when you use digital write instructions and how you can speed that up by doing direct port manipulations. And I did get a little bit sidetracked with the uh, interrupt uh, thing, but I thought that was a bit of fun. Cheerio!